Hello everybody and uh, welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. In today's uh, short tutorial, I would like to go through how to use my Cloud Pack in Unreal Engine uh, 5.3. So this particular Cloud Pack is meant to be used for scenes in which you are de developing a static uh, environment. And what I mean by this is like these clouds will not be animated. They are static clouds and they are using the new feature found in Unreal Engine 5.3. And this will allow you to have a very nice controllable cloudscape. So the purpose of this video is for me to showcase you those clouds and some of the settings that you can use to uh, actually leverage the power of uh, VDBs in Unreal Engine. So without any delays, uh, let's begin the tutorial. If you're interested in getting this cloud pack, the description is the link is in the description below. Uh, it is available on the Unreal Engine Marketplace and other stores as well. So let's begin. And here we are in the Unreal Engine 5.3 uh, pack. This is the uh, cloud volume. Uh, this is an example map that I've done. And right now we are in between the clouds, set up in a very dark scene with, with a bit of uh, lighting, uh, point lights around and rectangular lights. And you can see we can traverse between these clouds and you've just noticed in there a bit of a, a glitch, I would say. And that's because the densities of the clouds are sort of overlapping a bit. And that's normally what can happen with some of these effects. That's important for you to, to know that if you get them quite close together, you may have some issues with that. Um, so effectively, these clouds are really good for you to be able to build up your scene as you'd like um, and then if you'd like for those for that clipping effect to be not you know not be so um, so clear or you know doesn't happen all the time and things like that then what you'd want to do is you want to ensure that you've got higher quality clouds and also you can adjust the material for them if you need to um, in order to make sure that they're actually you know um, they are they are definitely definitely sampling the depth of the scene so to speak a lot better Right now, um, let's just have a look at what, you know, are these clouds at their maximum setting? And I would say that they're not because effectively to get a very good performance on these in real time, I'm just going to show you the FPS. There's a few settings in there to do. So right now it's running at around 70 to 80 FPS with, uh, you know, five of these in the scene and they're very high, uh, you know, they're, they're very demanding, these uh, sort of effects. But when you click one of the clouds, you've got some options in here. These are not animated clouds, so the animation tab doesn't really work for us. Uh, then this part here where we've got some, um, uh, you know, the MIP level. This is important because if you set the MIP level to like a 10, for example, and, you know, we have a look at this uh, cloud here, this one in particular. So, uh, sorry, not that one. It's actually this one here. Um, so if we set up this uh, the VIP level to 10 or maybe 50 or something like that, the quality of the cloud would effectively decrease, but the MIP level generally has an effect on something that's animated rather than um, something that's static. So, um, you know, setting this between 0 to 50, not much really changes. So that I would leave to 0 by default. Um, and sometimes you might have it to set to one, but as I said, this generally has an effect if you're doing um, a, an animated cloud or an animated um, explosion or something like that. Now, what is important is the step factor, shadow step factor, shadow bias factor, and the lightning down sample factor. Now, if you um, if you basically put all of these to one, your cloud will already you can see the performance is taking a hit and this cloud in particular now is at its highest sort of uh, level of quality if we for example start increasing some of this some of these uh, values then you're going to get better performance and you've probably noticed that right about here when it comes to lighting down sample and the shadows this is where most of the effects are happening I would say step factor and shadow step factor are going to be much more prevalent if we actually have a directional light in the scene. So we could we could have a look at, uh, at doing that. Let's just add a directional light. Okay, so I've just added a directional light, and I think if we change these these settings right now, uh, let me just make sure that I've selected the right cloud. Yeah. Um, so one, you can so you probably saw there a difference when we did that. Okay. 
So that's what that cloud sort of looks like. Uh, let me just put the mid level to zero. So again, let's try and 50 C doesn't really do anything. Put it to zero again, doesn't really change much. Um, but this is what the cloud looks like at values of one. Now, if we take these to a value of five, you'll notice some changes, but the performance will also increase. So now we kind of lost a lot of that shadow in there um, because we're not, you know, our step factor is very high and the bias and so on. But you want to keep this to one for your cinematic feel and in sequence it doesn't, won't really affect your performance as much because rendering is quite fast. Now the next thing in here, um, you know, you can, these shadows and contact shadows, self shadows and so on are not exactly useful at the minute uh not as much as you'd think they don't actually cast any shadow on the ground or anything as of yet i think this might be added in the in a few in the future uh these sort of settings in here don't really do much either unless you sort of look into combining that with the light uh system itself but anyway as you can see my performance are really dropped now by uh pushing those numbers effectively um, which was going to be the case. So as I said, you've got to be careful. Um, maybe try and use default values as much as possible. If you don't need to push the, just you know, just do your hero cloud. Your hero, your hero cloud, the one that's in front of you or something like that could be a lot higher quality. Um, but let me just um, try and pull this cloud a bit out of there. Now, one thing that I want to show you is if I select the directional light and then I search for volume. There's two options in here at the for vol. So there's cast volumetric shadow and then there's volumetric scattering intensity. If I disable cast volumetric shadow, you can see the clouds taking this very flat shape. So you definitely want to keep that ticked on. And then also this effect, the volumetric scattering intensity might be cool for you to play around with depending on uh, what sort of type of look you're going for. But the reason why I'm mentioning that one in particular is because especially if your cloud, uh, sorry, if you're making a fire and, and a VDB fire or explosion or something like that, this might help you to get a better feel to it. But for clouds, generally, you want them to be lightened up rather than darkened up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the free example maps that we have in here with the rest of the cloud sort of um, scenes. So let me just open this one. Uh, there's quite a few clouds in here. There's actually 16 clouds, as you can see. And the performance is really good um, on these because they're also a lot more flat than the other ones. Um, but there's a lot of variety here. So each one of these is a cloud that you could use in combination with each other. Um, and they're really, really cool. Again, their settings right now are set to the lowest in the sense of uh, we're not using high quality settings for them. Um, but they are really, really nice um, in terms of, you know, uh, you know, they've got a quite a nice uh, fluffy cloud-like appearance, as you can see. Um, and the fact that they're volumetric um, is really cool because you can obviously, um, you know, they, they react to the light as you'd expect. Uh, the second uh, example is this one where we've got the uh, heaviest sort of clouds. The density is also very high, so you could just select them and you can play around with the density if you'd like. Now the density um, is found in the material. So double click the material, bring that over here, and then you've got density in there. So you could do like a 0 0.1 if you want. Um, let's just have a look. Where did I select it? This one here. So 0 0.1 if you like, or you know, if you do zero, obviously you're not gonna have any density. But 0 0.01 or 0 0.05, as you can see, that changes how things look like in terms of density. And you can see in there what that looks like. Um, now I'm going to put that back to what it was, which is a one. Um, let me just have a look. Maybe is one. Okay. Maybe a two now one. Yeah, there we go. 0 0.5. Yeah. And again, if we, um, take the, the you know, our light, our uh, directional light, which is up there right now, it's not really able to push through the cloud as much. But if we decrease um, the uh, density of the cloud, then we'll be able to, uh, to you know, to get that done. And we, we don't have any light shafts enabled for this um, uh, directional light. But if we did, obviously, direct, uh, the sun shafts would be affected by this as well. Right. Okay, now let's go to the next uh, setup in here, which is this one. Um, so this one contains um, another 16 clouds, as you can see in there. 
and there's like loads of different variations all of them have a density set to one so i would definitely look at decreasing that density when setting up the scene these have just got their default sort of settings um as you, as you can see in here so what i would um, what i would uh, say about these clouds is that you effectively want to make sure that you author them to, to suit your needs um so the density of zero of one is probably a bit too much so maybe you want to go for like a 0 0.3 or something like that but it's depending on if you're making you know rain clouds or if you're just making normal clouds now um if we take the sun you know quite down like that and then we add a localized light in here so let's go and take a point light and drop it in there like that you can see how it lights up the cloud but right now it's quite flat so you have to search in the light settings you've got to search for volume and then cast volumetric shadow okay and you can also play around with the setting if you need to so now if we go into the lights color let's say we make it into a sort of like a blue um and then maybe increases intensity or something like that and then you could also look at uh radius and now if you if you sort of create a blueprint to make this light flicker and then maybe add a niagara effect of lightning bolts then you could easily create a cloud that's got you know it's a stormy cloud and uh, you could, you know, obviously you can get some of these clouds animated as well. I am going to be looking at releasing a pack like that, but that would then allow you to really build up some nice stormy clouds with it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what's in found inside this pack, and I hope it, I hope you sort of get a better understanding of how to use these and what they're meant for. Uh, the material itself is quite straightforward. If you open it in the, you know, if you actually open the material itself. You will notice that the, the setup is already done for you um, just to drag and drop the the clouds so we're using the same density to you know to work out the temperature so to speak and the density of this obviously these clouds don't have a temperature in the sense of they don't they're not on fire or anything but it doesn't mean that they can't be so you know if we start bringing in a black body in the temperature here uh, let's say we put this to like a, oh, actually 10,000 or something. Yeah, that's probably a bit too much. So something like that, as you can see. And then I don't know, black body is that too much? 0 0.1 or something. So you can now you now notice that we actually do get um, like a fiery cloud. So you can do that if you'd like. Um, nothing's really stopping you from using the temperature setting to create that. And then you also have a scattering color. So if you really want to. You could turn this into blue um, and then, I don't know, maybe teal or something. So there's, there's so many different things that you can do here to uh, really push these clouds into various different ways. OK, and obviously now we've got it quite red, but if we move the, you know, we can move the sun around and that will change things as well. So, yeah, I hope um, I hope that's uh, that's useful to you and I hope you've uh, learned something here. But I do hope you guys found that uh, tutorial uh, useful. Um, I hope you enjoyed the product and I will see you guys in the next video to come. Thank you for watching. Thank you for looking at my product and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, have a good day. Thank you.